Welcome to Signs from Above. This is Lucy B. So today's story is actually a story that's going on out in the world. I, what I do besides a podcast is I usually make a daily video, um, usually one to three a day, and it is on topics of news or look, just going in and doing some research on, research on countries, um, doing research on businesses, uh, oh, things that are just written all over their website, and truly seeing what's going on in this world and watching the Bible come to life with their with its prophecy. Uh, yeah, things just really, really blow my mind. And there's one particular, actually, this has happened over the course of three different times and I was ended up getting some videos that were really censored and not allowed to go out by putting this topic out there, which is countries, people, businesses that are rewriting the Bible. And I just think it's so bizarre that I just keep getting censored on this when this is out there. This is even on websites like this is out there. This is not a secret, but yeah, it's being censored. And I was getting so frustrated that I couldn't get this message out to people to warn them that this is happening. Um, it, I don't care about how many views I get. I don't care about that. What I care about is warning people and for them to be able to know what's happening. And this particular topic probably bothered me more than most because... Um, I'll just be honest, I'm a person that's in my Bible at least twice a day, right? Uh, I, I have the word of God in my heart and I want to know it. I want to not be deceived in this world. And I don't think that I am. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I really feel like my eyes are open, I open to the truth, truly open to the truth. And the what scares me with the bible being rewritten into someone else's morbid world breaks my heart and scares me not for me but for the people that don't know the bible and don't have it in their heart so if they ever go back to it they'll never know the truth on this so that's why i think right now it's just so vital extremely vital to get yourself a Bible, a printed Bible, not not anything on the web. Um, the reason why is because they're using AI to rewrite the Bible. Um, you use AI to rewrite the Bible. <sighs> then you, I I mean you just have to think about that. Like what's what 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 can be trusted out in the web. And I don't know what's going to happen even with, pr you know, but the print. Are they going to have these forever? Are they just going to say, nope, no books, everything's online? I don't know. I'm not saying that, I'm not telling you that that's going to happen, but what if it did? Why, why, why do we not have a Bible in our homes? Um, I do, but it's, it's, it really, really put into my heart since I've been doing this is that I need to get somebody a Bible. And I don't even have to know them. Maybe I do know them. Maybe I don't know them. But once a month, once a month, I can get a Bible for somebody. And God's going to reveal that to me. And he already has. He already has. It's actually been really easy. Uh, once that door is opened, and even, even with my husband, he's found opportunities with, you know, a, a guy that came over and just said he's really been struggling and he said, I don't know if you believe in the spiritual stuff, but I'm, I'm really kind of thinking, thinking I need a little dig a little further. <sighs> My husband's so sweet, went and bought him a Bible, you know, here you go. And talk to him about it. And that's what we need in this world is <sighs> these people that don't know the truth and getting them the Bible. So anyway, kind of the for story, if, if you will, before the actual story, the introduction. 
Um, anyway, going back to these videos, I finally did end up putting all of these into one video. I, and I do try to keep these videos fairly short. Try to keep them underneath a, a minute to keep the attention. Um, but so it's fairly, fairly short. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't have all the details that, that I'm going to put into this podcast. I probably need to make a longer vis- um, video. I'm definitely put that on YouTube, but I, I, I truly think that you all need to know this. And if you don't know already, like this is like a warning and it's j- again, just God warning us, warning us. And so anyway, let me just get right into it. I probably could sit on this forever and just talk and talk about it. So what has happened is that PETA is they have rewrote Genesis. Uh, so if you don't know who PETA is, PETA is People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. So they basically believe that animals and people are equals. And that's really how they live their 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 lives. Uh, we're obviously not equals, uh, but that's why they want to change the Bible to show that animals and and humans are are equal. So this is just a a blog. I'll just kind of give you tell you what it said. Here we go. So they put in the beginning, all animals were treated with respect according to PETA which has given the Bible book of Genesis a modern makeover using chat GPT to send a can't be missed animal rights message filled with vegan teachings. PETA hopes the new cruelty free story of creation will appeal to generation Z. 73% of whom identify as animal rights activists. The book PETA's version of the creation story Animals are referred to as beings rather than beasts or creatures. And plant fibers like hemp and bamboo are used in place of animal skin for clothing. And no one has any fashion or moral sense would wear animal skins in the 21st century. Duh. (laughs) And among other new interpretation, in Genesis 22, Abraham travels and he befriends a lamb versus sacrificing a ram. Ah, well, if that doesn't just change the whole story. Um, it says the Bible has long been used to justify all forms of oppression. So we've used chat GPT because, you know, chat GPT knows more than God, right? A- apparently we're making chat GPT our God. So anyway, side note. To make it clear that a loving God would never endorse this cruelty to animals, says PETA president. It took God only six days to create the entire world, but we realized it would take us years to rewrite the whole Bible, which is why we've started with just the first book. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, again... I, it, it's one of those where people are trying to play God and I, I, I don't like that. Uh, just creepiness all over it. So another revised pas- passage is in chapter 21 when Abraham and Sarah, who according to the original Bible were 190 years old when they conceived their child Isaac. But so they decided to, you know, grow their family and adopt a dog. And what I love about what PETA did is they definitely made it biblical name. And so Herbie is his name. So as they walk with Herbie, Sarah and Abraham thought of the importance of adopting dogs from shelters and rescue organizations rather than purchasing them from breeders. PETA's version reads, They spoke of how buying a dog or a cat from a breeder or a pet shop contributes to the companion animal overpopulation crisis. As countless dogs and cats in shelters await loving homes while breeders continue to produce more puppies and kittens for profit. So picture this, will ya? Picture Abraham and Sarah walking through the desert and they walk by... hmm, 
some pet shops and some breeders and they thought, oh goodness, no, we could never do that. We need to go to the, to the animal shelter or a rescue organization to get our dog Herbie. <laughs> oh my, okay, if you don't know the Bible, those did not exist back in that day. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So with the help of chat GPT, PETA's interpretation of creation story clarifies and highlights the message of kindness, gentleness, and love shared by all religions. Um, yeah, again, it, it, to me, I'm not a big, huge fan of AI or, you know, the chat GPT, but like it, you, they're already using it in dangerous territory, and I, 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 I don't like it. I don't like it. Um. So they also have in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Dot dot dot. And so he created animals of all shapes and sizes to live with humans. Everyone marveled at their beauty and grace, and not a single thought of fur coats crossed their mind. So, this is PETA, and they have the book of Genesis out, and they are selling the book. Just so you know. Uh, their intention, again, as you, you read, is to... They're working on the entire Bible, They've done the book of Genesis, and now they're working on the entire Bible. And the nonsense is that this is that someone comes in and reads this. Okay. Obviously, you know how I feel. All right, next. The Chinese government has, has also has plans to update the Bible, you know, to keep pace with the times. So... <laughs> Oh my goodness. And um yeah. Okay. I won't even go there. So the revision will include adding core socialist values and removing passages that do not reflect communist beliefs. So the project was actually announced in 2019 and at the time stated it would be a 10-year process. Uh depending on the development of AI on chat GPT that may move sooner. Um, we'll see. Uh, so the new translation of the Bible would include the Buddhist principles and among others, and even the, the communist principles. So one particular passage that has already been changed is in John 8. So that is that portion of the Bible. It's, it's a version about, uh, a sinful, sinful woman that's caught in the act of adultery. So Jesus says, those who are without sin cast the first stone. And as we know, nobody threw the stone and they, they slowly left. Well, the Chinese government has revised this. And their version states that Jesus ended up stoning the woman himself and said, I am also a sinner. <laughs> That basically, I mean, we, we, our Jesus is sinless and that he was our sacrifice and he was our, our way to heaven. He, he is that missing piece. And for them to actually take that part out makes the whole Bible completely irrelevant. But yet this is what they're doing. <laughs> I mean, I tell you more of what, what China is doing right now. Uh, it's like you have to have this app for any actually it doesn't matter what religion it's not just christian but you have to have an app on what religion that you go to and these they have if you go to a church you have to make it known to them and every time that you attend you have to put that you're going in attendance that day and if you don't you can be arrested and anybody that's underneath the age of 18 is not allowed at all it's insane in completely insane uh, so I may just, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, that's for a whole country and 
if you want a side note, side note, I do work with a guy that actually, he, he would smuggle Bibles into, into China and he's, he's younger. He's only 30. And so that it wasn't even that long ago when he did this, that he was smuggling these in, which I just thought was pretty amazing. Um, anyway, so going to the next one, I, I'm probably going to butcher this guy's name. So I am so sorry. I am not good with these <laughs> non-English names. I'm sorry. I'm just horrible at it. Um, so his name is, and you may have heard of him, but I think it's called Yuval Noah Harari. So he's a World Economic Forum contributor and speaker. Uh, he is Jew. He... Attended, he knows the Bible really. He knows the Bible really, really, really well. Uh, he can he can take quotes out of that Bible. At least he pretends to know it really well. Uh, maybe he's just taken some passages out, but it. But listening to him, he sounds like he's very knowledgeable. Maybe he just takes a couple verses out and makes him sound like he's knowledgeable. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't really know the guy, uh, but. What's happening is that he he believes, and he's even said that we can become our own gods. We don't need God. We can become our own gods. So he's a complete atheist. Uh, I, I wonder if he had a belief when he was younger, but I'm not sure. I haven't really gone in that deep. But he is Jewish. He's married to a man. Um, but again, believes that we are our own gods. Uh, so he believes that the world is on the verge of getting a new religion. And he said that the new religion will be completely generated by artificial intelligence. So he believes that chat GPT, there's that word again, may draw, may draw like people creating their own sacred text in the not so distant future. Uh, he states in the future, we may see the first cults and sects in history with treasured scriptured treasured <laughs> again we're making artificial intelligence our god based upon these people they're not listening to god he wrote it he wants us to worship or not i'm not saying they want us to worship but they're putting these this artificial intelligence as god and so this is why he says that we are going to have treasured scriptures Created by non-human intelligence. So you tell me where that goes from there. That they're seeing this as their God. You guys, that's scary. Not if you have hope in Jesus, but phew, outside of that, it's scary, man. Um, but he believes AI will, rec- will and can create a universally accepted religious text. Uh love to hear your guys' thoughts on this, but I mean, I, this is just scratching the surface of what's going on. I don't even know if there's others that have created this or starting to create this. Uh, I have seen that there's a AI feature and I haven't really gone in and looked to, looked at it so much, but it's ask Jesus. So you basically can ask <laughs> this artificial intelligence, Jesus, any type of life questions that you want to ask it. And supposedly comes back. I don't know if it's biblical or not. Again, that's a good one for me to go in and research. Um, I haven't got that far, but you know, it's kind of, again, AI Jesus, you know, ask Jesus, AI Jesus, putting artificial intelligence as God. So this world is getting insane. I've never seen it like this. And I just, Every single time that I think that I can't be surprised, I'm more and more surprised. It's crazy. It is crazy. And especially as a Christian, when you see this and know what the Bible states and what's coming, like, all I can say, and I probably have said this before on another one, is don't keep your head in the sand and pretend that nothing is happening. As a Christian, you're not supposed to be scared, but you're supposed to know what is coming. You're supposed to know the season of Jesus' return. 
You're supposed to know these things and you're sup- not supposed to keep your head in the sand and just pretend it's all going to go away because it's not going to go away. And we need your voice. We need your voice somehow, some way, even prayers, you know, pray, pray. If that's all you, if that's, if that's the gifting God's given you, pray. Anyway, as many of you may know, when you hear all of this, what verse do you think it takes you to? For me, it takes me to Revelations 22, 18 through 19. It says, I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this scroll. If anyone adds anything to them, God will add to that person the plagues described in this scroll. And if anyone takes away words from the scroll of prophecy, God will take away from that person any chance in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in the scroll. So, again, thank you so much for listening to Signs from Above, and I truly am praying for you all, and we'll see you next week. Bye.